The Sweet Sound of Success show is brought to you by The Mentor Studio. The Mentor Studio is an exclusive mentoring and training program for social influencers, business owners, entrepreneurs, coaches, and startups, bringing personal development to the underserved around the world. And brought to you by Success Strategists, simple strategies that work to develop your business with flow and ease using proven strategies and the right tactics. This is the Sweet Sound of Success with Sue Wilhite, Profit Attraction Master. Michael Whitehouse moved to Groton, Connecticut in 2014, knowing absolutely no one. Over the next two years, he built a network that earned him the moniker of the guy who knows a guy. Today, he teaches what he learns through his coaching programs. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. It's great to be here. And uh, I was just chatting before we started the recording already. He's introduced me to two people. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what I do. <laughs> and they've already been really useful connections. So I will say, Michael knows whereof he speaks. And so I'm really fascinated to find out his hero's journey. And for the viewers and listeners who haven't encountered the show, this is structured along the lines of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. And so I'm taking out five pieces out of that 16 part cycle that Joseph Campbell talks about. And we're going to be talking about the <laughs> ordinary beginning. No entrepreneur is ordinary. Um, <laughs> the call to action, what brought Michael into the stratosphere. Uh, the big hairy monsters, because no matter what it is that we do, whether we're entrepreneurs or not, there's always big hairy monsters. And sometimes for entrepreneurs, that is the call to action. And sometimes the big hairy monsters show up afterwards and sometimes both. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. And the allies, mentors, guides, coaches, supporters, cheerleaders, because no entrepreneur does this in a vacuum. And I'm very sure that Michael is going to <laughs> talk about this because it's all about the people, right? And then finally, we talk about the hero's journey, uh, the, the journey home. Uh, and in the journey home, Joseph Campbell talks about after the hero has had these adventures, something has changed. And for the entrepreneur, the first time somebody pays you for some service or product, even if it's just, hey, you know, you do this for me and, and there's, you know, something of value that's exchanged, it changes inside. It changes us inside. And there is something that kind of switches that goes, whoa, I can do this. And not everybody else in your community has done that. <laughs> so sometimes it's a little bit tricky to deal with the, when are you going to get a job questions <laughs> and the, what is it you do again? <laughs> so Michael, what was your ordinary beginning? Uh, well, my, my ordinary beginning was that I was not good at getting and keeping jobs. For the longest time. I got out of college. I opened a game store because I got frustrated with the job search process. And I'm 22 and I'm too dumb to know what I don't know. And uh, my family was trusting enough to invest money in me. So I said, I'm going to launch a business. It's going to be great. And it never actually made any money. Other than that, it was very successful, but it never made any money. It was a great community space. And then from there, I did a series of jobs. I tried sales and nothing ever really stuck. And at the time, I felt like, wow, I really suck at working. And I've come to, in retrospect, realize that that was, the, in that weakness was the seeds of my superpower because I couldn't, I, could, I, I couldn't just settle for, you know, some people work an office job for 20 years 
and they go to work, they come home, and they have very little knowledge of the world around them. You see that today on social media. People just don't know what other people's lives are like. Me, I was here, I was there, I was meeting people, I was joining these things, I joined that thing. I'm bouncing all over the place. And people are like, Michael, you're all over the place. But after 20 years of being all over the place, I know a little bit about everything. Yes. And so that's that's how I was kind of building up my superpower without even realizing it, thinking, you know, I was focusing on the master of none and not realizing I was also developing jack of all trades. Right. Uh, and so that was kind of my my build up and, and how I, um, but, you know, as I was building, I did not see where I was going. I just saw that I was kind of limping from one activity to the next, to the next, to the next, and um, being like, oh, this is not going well, but I was actually preparing. Right, right. And there's there's actually a book out there. For those of you who know me, you know I can't talk for 10 minutes without recommending a book. Um, and uh, there's a book called The Renaissance Soul. And it's exactly about this kind of mindset where we can't just have one. <laughs> we can't just stay with one thing. It's like there, it, there's got to be things. And she points out, the author of the book points out that Leonardo da Vinci was exactly like this. And nobody said, when are you going to get a real job or yep. you're a jack of all trades, master at none. No, he just did what he did intensely and moved on to the next thing. Yep. So lots of great examples out there for you. So what was the call to action that woke you up to, oh, you've got a superpower? Uh, well, there, there's a couple of calls to action. Uh, there's basically been three times when my networking sort of burst out and then twice sort of receded to the background. Uh, the first time is when I tried to get into life insurance sales and the company I worked for didn't give me any good direction on how to prospect, how to build leads, how to do anything. And I was aware of networking, aware of BNI, and I was in life insurance. So if you know anything about BNI, I couldn't get a seat there. But I found a group that was willing to let me, uh, let me sub a lot. And of course, didn't get me any business because I already had a finance guy. But I kind of got to experiment with networking and building a networking group. And then in 2014, uh, as you mentioned, I moved to Groton, Connecticut, because my wife, uh, I left my job in a long story I described in my book, the guy who knows a guy. Um, but I'd left my job. My wife had changed jobs. And because she was in property management and our apartment was tied to her old job, we had 30 days to move. So it was a very rapid, precipitous move. Fortunately, she knew someone, uh, you know, networking is great all the time. She knew someone who managed a property. She was in property management. And so we had a place to move to. We knew nothing about the place we're going to, except we could get in fast enough that we wouldn't be homeless. Right. So at the time, I was kind of thinking about doing some kind of consulting thing. In retrospect, I had no plan and it was doomed to failure. But I knew I needed a network. I needed connections. I needed to be knowing a lot of people. So I just jumped in with both feet into the networking scene. So I going to chamber commerce events, doing one-to-ones, getting referrals to other people to do one-to-ones with and building and building and building. And in some ways, a failure of that business gave me the space to go full time, learning how to network, learning how to build a network, learning how to make connections, learning how to provide networking value. And then the third and final call to action that really started the story was the pandemic, which, you know, it was tragic. Many people died. It's terrible. Uh, it's, it's awful that it happened. But for myself, it was a pretty good thing because it separated me from a business I was doing, business slash job as one of those franchisee type things, where I was doing okay, but I wasn't doing well. And I certainly wasn't following my own calling and my own path. And suddenly that became no longer a tenable solution. And all I was left with was this coaching thing I'd been kind of thinking about for a while, but not quite sure what to do. And so I said, well, let's take this networking. Now I can go to the internet. Now we can go, now I can meet people all over the world. And I started by visiting BNI groups all over the world because I went online. I'm like, wait a minute. I can find them all. I can join this, this BNI Facebook group. I can say, who wants a visitor from Connecticut? And mm -hmm. a few of them raised their hands. And I started making connections in Malaysia and Washington State and Florida and England and Africa. Uh, and just kind of took my networking to the next level. And, you know, I've been, it, there's been a lot of experiment and trial and error. And I think we're going to get to, uh, I think in the next stage, we get to more of that. But <laughs> that, that was really the, the thing that changed, you know, the world shifted. Right. And 
I realized I was able to nimbly jump to actually where I was always meant to be. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that that absolutely describes what the experience was for a number of people mm -hmm. that suddenly the world literally opened up. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, the internet was, you know, a curse and the blessing. <laughs> <laughs> just enabled all of these. I never would have met you yep. if it hadn't been for the pandemic. Yep. I mean, you're in Connecticut. I'm in California. Mm -hmm. the chances are really good that we would never have crossed paths. Yeah. Yep. And, and I was trying to really drive that point home to every anyone who would listen. Be like, this is not a curse. This right. is not a terrible thing. I mean, yes, it's a terrible thing because it's a pandemic. But yeah. for you, assuming you have not gotten COVID and haven't personally lost anyone, there is a very, very bright side. It's, it's, it's like we're playing musical chairs and we've all been sitting for a while and suddenly we all get to stand up and rotate. Right, right. Um, what, I've, what I've told my clients for years is when they would resist, uh, you know, oh, I don't know how to talk. It's like there's 7.25 billion people on the planet. Somebody out there is your client and they would be like, uh, well, now I can say it. It's like, just go on Zoom. Yep. <laughs> There's, there's all kinds of networking opportunities. Really, They're on the internet, two five billion people to play with. Yep. Yeah. So, what were some of the big hairy monsters besides, you know, bouncing from uh, not a job to not a job? <laughs> um, the, the the big hairy monsters really it was uncertainty more than anything else. Um, so my my superpower is that I have met all these people connected because I wander all over the place, but that doesn't make a business. So I'd be making all these connections and nothing would actually solidify out of it because there wasn't a product to drive. Right. There wasn't a program to sell. And, and I try to make something I'm like, oh, I'm not really happy with this. And I don't know if I want to commit to this avatar and I don't want to commit to this program. And there's a bit of this and a bit of that. And, and actually in my book that I wrote in 2017, I wrote a chapter, which is really a letter to myself called monetization makes the world go round. Mm. In other words, you can meet everyone in the world, but if you don't have a product or something to sell or some way to turn those connections into money, you'll be the most, the best connected homeless guy in town. And, and it, that, I wrote that for myself for a reason because I wasn't, you know, wasn't able to do that. Uh, and so it's just kind of like this lack of focus and ultimately the solution lay in the problem mm -hmm. as it often does, which is joint ventures. And the things that I'm, I'm doing that are really showing promise, I'm teaming up with other people. And yeah. one, I team up with people who fill my weaknesses, but also I'm accountable. I yeah. can't get distracted and go off somewhere else because I'm committed. I can't just be like, oh, I got distracted. I'm over here now. So I have these joint ventures and that keeps me accountable. And it's, of course, through the networks, through the internet, through, through all that, that I'm discovering it. But, but it's, it's always that, that drive, that wanderlust, the, oh, is this do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do that? And, 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 and even not quite imposter syndrome. Uh, but when I first started coaching, I said, I wrote a book on networking. I'm a networking guy. I should be a networking coach. I got some clients and I'm like, all right, I'm your networking coach, but I teach you how to network. They're like, yeah, I don't really want to learn how to network. I need to learn how to close. I need to learn how to do social media. I need to learn how to, and I could teach them those things too. And I said, oh, nobody wants a networking coach. And what I forgot was they hired me as a networking coach and then changed what they wanted. But I put those two things together and said, oh, I should stop calling myself a networking coach because nobody wants that. Of course they want it. They just don't want to do the work. Yes. I need to network. So, yeah. so it was like, yeah, you can teach me network. Great. Introduce me to everyone I need. And I'm like, okay. So I was, I was giving them a fish. So I teach them a fish, but I'll get paid for that. That's fine. But I let myself get distracted. Uh, and finally had to wander off through the, you know, wander through the desert for 40 years or 40 weeks at least, and right. finally come back and be like, oh, wait. And, and I, I remember, I, it was, I, I can't remember what caused the epiphany, but I had this epiphany. I posted in a, a group for coaches that I'm in, of, you know, people who know me. I'm like, so I just had this blinding flash of the obvious. I should be a networking coach. And everyone's like, of course you should. What took you so long? Right. And a few of them are like, I told you that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you probably did. So. Right, right. So 
with those connections that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really want to get into allies, mentors, cheerleaders, because you're the guy who knows a guy. (laughs) (laughs) So you got to know somebody. (laughs) I I know a couple. Yeah, I know one or two people (laughs) who I can describe. Um, Yeah, and and so there were certain key people. Actually, in in my podcast recently, I broke it down into quarters because I was trying to figure out, like, how am I here? How have I gotten here? How am I not further? Uh, And, you know, what happened? And so there was a series, and and his, his hero's journey really is a great metaphor for it, because you know, I'm picturing, you know, picturing the, the the fellowship of the ring traveling along and meeting all these different these different right. people who guided and taught them. So the first one was I was still trying to save my magazine publishing uh, business was uh, a, a coach named Brandon Tillia, mm-hmm. and he uh, he was actually connected with a company that sold leads because I couldn't network. So I couldn't get the leads from in-person networking. And so I went to this company to sold leads and he had a deal with them where he'd onboard all their new clients, which is brilliant. If, you, if you're a coach and you can ever get that kind of deal right. to onboard another company's clients, amazing. You get to prospect their entire throughput right. possibly in your own programs. Right. So I talked to him and he's like, well, I've got these solutions. They're mostly for coaches, not magazine publishers, but you know, give me a few bucks and I'll teach them to you and we'll see how they work. I said, all right, sure. So I invested in that. Turned out they didn't work for beans for magazine publishers. He said, you know, you really should be a coach. You feel like a coach to me. You seem like a, and I'm like, well, I have been kind of wanting to be a coach for, I don't know, 20 years, but I've never had a way to sell it. And you're showing me how to sell it, which you've already trained me to do. Let's give it a shot. So I started selling. And by, so this was uh, third quarter, 2020, by the end of third quarter, I'd, I'd signed up 10 clients in 10 weeks. Unfortunately, my salesmanship was far in advance of my coaching ability um, because I was just an intuitive coach. Right. So the sales strategy was brilliant in that I didn't promise anything. <laughs> I got you thinking about what you want and then said, would you like help with that? And you're like, yes, I would. And then I told you what it cost. And you said, okay. Uh, but I might have led someone to believe I could get them from six to 200 clients, which I had no tools to do. I never said I could get you 200 clients. I simply said, would you like help with that? And you said, yes, but I very quickly realized I am very effectively selling something I can't necessarily deliver, which gave me a little crisis of confidence, but I was just successful enough to confidently walk away from the publishing business. Right. And then all the clients left. I lost my confidence. Couldn't say. Right, right. So that, that's, it was just enough success to make me think I could do it. Right. And then back to and then not. Yep. Yeah. And then the, the next guy that I met was Lois Kofi, who teaches uh, list build to freedom. Um, she's all about building email lists. And at the time, it wasn't the solution I needed because mm-hmm. I didn't have an avatar. I didn't have a, right. a program. I didn't have right. focus. It turned out to be very use, very valuable. But at the time, it wasn't the right thing because I was building my list kind of randomly as I want to do. Um, and then the next first quarter, I guess this is really one a quarter. First quarter, I met Eric Ben Susan, who is a coach of coaches. Uh, I met him through a company that I won't name because I don't think they deliver very well. Um, but a, a company that supposedly gives you leads for coaching, which they don't. But what they made me do is take this program with Eric that taught the fundamentals of coaching and all the tools and strategies. So I was no longer just an intuitive coach. I had the whole tool bag of coaching plus my intuitive skills, plus my network and everything I've learned. So now all of a sudden I had the value. um, And actually after I left the company, I will not name uh, Eric advertised another program independent of that, which I've signed up for. And uh, actually I was in the training just prior to this, this uh, interview. So then in June was the big one. Uh-huh. An event called Strategic Alliance Live. Oh, yes. And in that, I was exposed to a massive, you know, the, the, I saw the world. And say, because I'd, I'd previously been paddling around kind of in the shallow end with all the five figure coaches, four figure coaches. And at Strategic Alliance Live, there were seven, eight, and nine figure business owners mingled in with the three, four, and five figure business owners. And all networking together, I learned about strategic alliances and joint ventures and teaming up and working together. And and from there, it was just it was just a matter of the execution. Like I now knew what it looked like 
to succeed. I just had to figure out who to do it with, how to put it together. Um, I left there during the course of that event. I probably set up, it must've been 61 to once. Nice. I was, it was early June was the event in early August. No, in mid July, I was still meeting with people that I'd booked meetings for right. at that event. And right. wow. And, and through that, you know, some of those meetings turned into joint ventures and, you know, really gave me focus and a lot of those people gave me great free advice and, you know, too many people to name, uh, right, although right, right, right. many on the podcast. But you had this wonderful pool yes. of people yes. to, to like create a little business tsunami. Yes. Yeah. And, and it, it, it basically got to the point where it, where it went from individuals guiding me to a group of right, 20, right. 30 and each one, you know, and, and amazing people so generous with their time and their advice and, you know, $2,000 an hour coaches who'd, who'd talk, right. gonna call me for an hour and just generously right. share everything they knew. And, and you know, I, I hope that someday I will be able to build an event or program or whatever to bring them into and pay them back for what right. they invested in me. But, right. but yeah, it just got to the point where it just, it was multiple per, per week and sometimes multiple per day right. in terms of the mentors I've been able to surround myself with. Right. And actually, that's a point I've, I've made it in some other episodes. But if you're watching this one, this is the one you get to hear it from. Uh, this is a point that I want to make that when people become successful, 99% of them want to turn around and help someone else be successful. Yes. It's, it, it's, yes. it's almost it's it, it's almost in the DNA. It's yep. so, so never ever, if you're a budding entrepreneur or you're an entrepreneur, you know, in progress, never be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Don't be a noob about it, but, <laughs> but never be afraid to, to ask for help, you mm -hmm. know, and chances are good. You're going to get it. Yep. And, and if, if somebody does say, I don't have time for that, or I don't share my advice for free, right. they're probably not that successful. Right. Could be very much could be. Yep, because it because if if they're successful, now they may honestly be busy. Right. In which case, you'd be like, you know what? I would love to help you, and I really wish I could, but I got a program I'm working. They'll actually give you an honest excuse, right. like right. I got a program I'm working on, really in the weeds right. for the next two months. Right. Maybe reach out. For them. <laughs> but, but if they blow you off with the "I don't work for free," right? If they're in that scarcity mindset, they probably haven't made it. Right. Right. No matter how much they show it, they probably yes. haven't made it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, in the time that we have left, I want to cover what was your journey home? What mm. was what was that like? So, so the journey home is interesting because I, I have I am not the same person I was a year and a half ago. Um, you know, by being surrounded by all these people, Strategic Alliance Live and, and my own Conference 21 exposed me to dozens of great people. So I see the world differently. I, I have a level of gratitude I could never have imagined before. Um, I'm not afraid of what's going to happen anymore. So, I mean, I get frustrated with things, you know, COVID coming back made me right. certainly smack my hand in my forehead and be like, oh my goodness. But then I get over it because I, I just changed the way I see the world. And then I'll talk to, talk to old friends, talk to family and be like, oh, you're still afraid of things. Oh, you don't wake up with gratitude every day. Right. Yes. Cause you yeah. haven't been on my journey. And then it's just almost like, how can I bring them with me? They're so, yes. they're so left behind. Um, and then the, the greatest frustration is when I talk to my old friends um, and, and I look at their life and I know if they would just, and not you know, if they would just, but if they just do everything I told them to, <laughs> that I could tell, I could give them in 45 minutes, download the information for a series of actions that would revolutionize their life. Not all of them. Sometimes I tried to help someone they've honestly tried to help. And there's like, yeah, the device doesn't fit. And I really need, would need to put 20 hours in to figure that out. But some of them literally, so the number of people who downloading the Uber app and starting driving Uber and putting their job would revolutionize their life and solve all their problems is tremendous. Right. And, and just that I can't bring them with me. It, it doesn't so much, it's not so much my problem because, because I get they respect the, like, I don't know what you're doing, but you seem to be doing well. So good on you. But it's the frustration that I can't, I have to leave them behind. Right. Or I can't, right. Right. You know, it, it's like the guy who, who, who escapes just as the, just as the, the communists are taking over the country. Right. And, you know, it's like, like a general um, MacArthur, who's like, I will return. 
Right. I don't know how I'll free you, but somehow I will return to free you from the situation you're trapped in. Someday. Yes. We'll, we'll figure it out somehow. Yep. Right. Yes. Yes. And that is the motivation, by the way, that thing I said earlier mm-hmm. about people being willing to go back and, and help other people follow. There's the motivation. It's yes. like we have we have escaped from this prison mm-hmm. and and we really want others to do the same. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, no. Put the scales well, from your eyes. Come on. And it's both for selfish reasons and not uh, for, for uh, non-selfish yes. reasons. I want to help them, but also selfish reasons. If right. too many people in America have given up on the American dream and given up yeah. on capitalism, eventually it crumbles under that weight. Exactly. And if exactly. there's too large of an underclass, eventually the things that are good for everyone, if they'll take advantage of it, we lose. Exactly. And, yes. and that's, and that would be yes. a, a truly awful thing. You know, California, when they, when they changed the laws on, when they, yeah, then they changed the laws on uh, independent contractors yes. and almost destroyed the amazing opportunity that Uber is. Well, um, and and, and I have, musicians, graphics designers, journalists, oh, yeah. photographers. It was I a mean, nightmare right. for everyone, but they were able to do it because so many people said the system is broken, hit it with a hammer. Right. I don't care what happens. Right. right. Just change it because right. they're so frustrated. And the, the, the risk of politicians breaking stuff because they don't understand what they're doing and the public's willing to go along with it because they're so frustrated and desperate right. is yeah, you know, we're sitting on a powder keg. Yeah. And so we need to bring the people who are behind up with us, whether yeah. it is because of their demographics, their race, their class, their sexuality, there's so many people left behind Whatever so many is. reasons. Yes. We need to bring them along for our benefit. Yes. So yes. they don't pause all back. So yeah. everybody wins. Yes. It's a win, win, win for yep. everyone to make that happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's actually, that's why my, the current season, my, the guy who knows a guy podcast, I'm interviewing a lot of those successful people that I met at SIL and that I've met other places to share their stories and say, how did you do it? So people can listen to that and say, oh, because so often, oh, I don't have the education. I don't have the connections. I've got a disability. I've got autism. I've got this. Oh. I've got that. <laughs> And, and I, I want to build a library so that whatever excuse you give me, I can go, ah, episode 76. Right. Listen, listen exactly. to this guy, you know. Go off oh, it. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, oh you, you have autism? Well, listen to Dan Mangana's interview where he says autism is his superpower. Yes. You know, oh, you yeah. know, you, you, you lost everything. Your credit's terrible. Listen to Ken Krell's story because right. he lost everything and lived his mother's couch for two years. Right. You know? And I've got a story for any excuse you've got. I want to have somebody who overcame exactly what you're dealing with because yes, I get rid of the excuses yes. and the, the, the opportunity is there for everyone. Exactly. And the frustration is how do I share that? Right. So you do have stuff to share though. I do. So you, have, you have some resources for people. Tell I, us about that. I do indeed. So I actually have a couple things, but the thing I'm going to mention specifically um, because I'm confident it will still be running when, when this airs <laughs> is I have run across and through trial and error discovered a whole bunch of Uh, solutions to things, mostly technologies. Um, Some of them are courses and programs and individuals. Um, And so what I've set it up is a weekly email sequence. So if you go to resources.guywhoknowsaguy.com, you sign up and you will every Thursday get an email that teaches you how to do various things. The first one is emails because I figure I'm sending you an email. You want to know how I did it. So it it has the platforms I use for, for emails, for appointment setting, for expense tracking, um, you know, all kinds of courses. One of the links is to Lois Kofi's program that, that got me started right. with that. And right. it's just every week you get some of the, and originally it was going to be like a five day sequence for a week. And then I realized this is going to be a 12 day sequence, a 14 day sequence. And then it's kept adding to it. Now, you know, I'm right. just going to make it a weekly sequence that'll run as long as I've got stuff. And uh, it seems just yeah. keep going. So How uh, yeah, go to resources. That's the guy knows got to come. That What's is that? phenomenal. Uh, yeah. For those of you listening uh, and not watching, it will, of course, the links will be in the show notes, along with all of other, all of Michael's other contact information. So thank you so much, Michael, for being on the show. Um, we've got so much in common. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the entrepreneurs out there. I love it that you've got a podcast that that is teaching people, no, really, you can do this. Yep. <laughs> And, and, you know, freeing people from the the corporate prison 
or the job prison or whatever it is that they've got going. Yes. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being on my show. I've really enjoyed your story. Um, I'm sure my viewers and listeners have enjoyed it as well. So thank you also to them, the viewers and the listeners of The Sweet Sound of Success. Thank you for having me. your dreams for your business. You know what drives me crazy? Really smart business owners denying their talents because they've been taught it has to be hard, because they've been taught that they don't deserve their gifts, that they're not worth anything. They've been taught that their gender means they can't express their genius. I'm Sue Wilhite, and I want you to have access to your genius. I want you to go out and rock the world with your genius. So I created the Call to Action Coaching Program. It's all about getting to the heart of you and what you've got to share with the world to make a profitable business that thrives and allows you to make a difference in the world. Click the link to sign up for the Call to Action Coaching Program today. Don't let your genius go unnoticed.